You're listening to the Intuitive Souls Podcast. I am your host, Erica Russo, psychic medium and intuitive development coach. This show is all about giving you the conversations, tools, and wisdom you need to live life the intuitive way. Whether you are waking up, wanting to develop your intuition and connection to spirit, or wanting to live a more magical life, I got you covered. I give you grounded, practical, and insightful content that helps you wake up, level up, and connect with your soul. I'm excited you are here. Let's wake up together. Hey guys, welcome to the Intuitive Souls podcast. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I'm really excited that you are here today. If you are an OG and you keep coming back, you keep learning, growing, listening, expanding, integrating. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being you. Thank you for learning. Thank you for growing. Thank you for trusting your intuition. You know, there's been a huge theme in my own personal life this past week, and that is faith. That is having faith within the void. That is having faith when Things don't look like everything is going to pan out the way you want them to. This is where we flex our manifestation muscles. This is where we co-create with spirit. It is within the void that our connection, our faith grows deeper. When we have to only rely on something that we can't see or feel or is tangible, that is true spiritual growth. When all we have is faith, that's it. That's it. We don't have a contract. We don't have a vision. We have no idea how shit is going to come together. We have no clue. It is in those moments of just the void, really the absolute void, the darkness, where we don't know what direction we're going in. We don't know what is ahead of us. We don't know what's coming for us. All we can do is hold faith. Those are the powerful moments that bring us closer to our soul. They're the hardest. I mean, trust me when I tell you, they are really fucking hard. But it's in those moments where we really, really deepen our connection, whether you are developing your mediumship, whether you are not developing your mediumship, whether you are just wanting to feel a deeper connection to yourself, to the universe, to your guides, it's in those moments of the unknown. It's in those moments of darkness. It's in those moments Like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, when she's up in that tornado, she has no idea where it's going to land. She has no idea if it's even going to land. It's in those moments that we are cultivating such incredible faith. The strongest, most powerful thing that we can do as humans is to hold faith. And it is not easy. My God, it's so fucking hard. But just remember that this next year, if you have been listening to our astrology forecast each month, it is really, really crazy. It's going to be really crazy. And with so many people waking up, it is just incredibly scary. I remember when I first woke up. I remember the feeling of isolation. I remember all of those thoughts that were going and going rampant inside of my mind. And it was this silent faith that my soul hold throughout the whole process that led me to where I am today. It led me to me talking to you right now uh, at this podcast. It led me to build a business It's in that silent faith. You, your human, can be losing your ever-loving shit. (laughs) But it's your soul that's okay. Your soul is always going to be okay. It's your human that gets in the way. That's my spiel today. Now, 
I do want to invite each and every one of you to my five-day intuitive living summit that is going to be held December 6th through December 10th. This is something that I've never done before. And what it essentially is, is each day I'm going to be showcasing a different class, whether that is a breathwork class. I will be hanging out with Meg Vanderkruik of This Mess is Ours, which is actually this week's episode. And we are going to be doing a free intention charcuterie class on Monday. We are going to be doing a psychic and mediumship demonstration, all the things. I really want you to come. Now more than ever, you deserve to give yourself a little bit of a break, to give yourself some time out each day to connect with your soul. And I want to give this to you. This is my way of giving back. If you are interested in coming and hanging out and connecting with me, as well as a ton of other incredible healers, psychic mediums, intuitives, just people, the link is will be in the show notes for you to come hang out. I really, really cannot wait to connect with you next week. So with that being said, this week's episode is another Intention Kitchen episode where I hang out with Meg Vanderkruik and we are talking all things gifting, right? Intentional gifting. This is one of my favorite things to do and she shares a really easy, which is what I like, <laughs> easy sugar cookie recipe where you can integrate the colors of the chakras and just get a little woo with your cookie recipe this year. I hope you guys enjoy it. Again, I really hope to see you guys next week at the five-day intuitive summit. Go ahead, get in the link in the show notes. I can't wait to see you there and have a wonderful weekend. Hi guys, welcome to December's Intention Kitchen episode with my dear friend, Meg Vanderkruik of This Mess Is Ours. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, you are seeing that she has a fabulous getup on, it's like an antler with cardinals, which is my thing. It's absolutely adorable. So. It is my nature, nature queen Christmas crown. I actually, my son was in a Christmas parade and some of the parents could walk with a float and they were like, wear your favorite costume. And this is it. This is this. Beautiful. Yeah. I think it's my favorite costume because I love Cardinals too. I do too. I feel like, you know, and I love the deer antlers, you know, and like, it's just yeah. like everything in the forest that I love. I mean, mm-hmm. It's a nice, peaceful costume. It's not like the Grinch. Or, yeah. Right. Or like an ugly sweater. It's actually very elegant, I should say. Thank I, you. Well, I like to embody, <laughs> I don't want to offend. Anyone. And I like to embody all the se- you know, all the season has to offer. Absolutely. So. Speaking of the season. I mean, we I am so excited about next week's 5-day intuitive living summit that I am hosting. Holy and I'm so ex- I know. It's going to be insane. So guys, if you are interested in joining, it is totally free. I will have the link in the show notes for you to join. Everything's going to be on Facebook. It is going to start on December 6th, and I'm kicking off that evening with an intention charcuterie class with Meg. We're going to have, I know, I know. Oh my God, I'm so excited about it. You know, I have a thing for charcuterie. So I'm like, this is going to be so much fun. And I then know. I have, love the way you say charcuterie. Say it. Am I, I know. I know I'm butchering it. How, no, but see, here's the thing. You're not butchering it. You say it as Erica Russo says it. Like my daughter can't, like she says ambulance different and pistachio different. And anytime like I smile or whatever, she's like, ah, oh, I said it wrong. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That is your unique way of saying it. I love it because I love it. So I just, I don't call you out. I'm just saying I like it. And I don't if ever you knew it. what I actually used to call it, I used to call it like for a year, no joke. I would always like tell Tony, like, I'm going to make a caricature brewer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not joking. And then I heard someone say charcuterie and I'm like, oh, I think that's the way you're supposed to say it. Yeah. I mean, look, it, everybody knows what you're talking about. So. I, th- I, I would hope so by now. It's a cheese and meat board. 
But, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. like if you put a lot of dips on them, I call them Dunkin' Slather boards because it's more like mm. a hummus and a salsa and a whatever. Like sometimes I like to call them Dunkin' Slather boards because that's more of what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's a breakfast board. Sometimes it's a dessert board. Have you ever had a dessert cheese board? I've had a dessert board. Oh, so yeah. good. So I say you call it whatever the heck you want. We're, we're talking about boards. On yes. <laughs> he filled yes. with food. So guys, the five day <laughs> intuitive living summit is December 6th through December 10th. Every day I'm going to be hosting a new event. The first event again is char- intention charcuterie with Meg. Everything is interactive guys. Come hang out with us for real. There's going to be oh, a yeah. breathwork class. I'm going to be doing a mediumship demonstration with my good friend, Dana Willie, who's been on the podcast psychics oh my god it's gonna be so much fun my cousin again, signed up your she's- cousin did sign up i'm yeah. very much looking forward to connecting with her again i'm so excited she's going yes. I was like, it's gonna be fun <laughs> it is gonna be fun so come hang out with us for real for real so today in intention kitchen we're talking about intentional gift giving because it's december yes, and december. it is december and tis the season, right? Like it is, you know what? I think some people in December are really excited for the gifting. I think some people in December are really excited that it's just like the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Like you get fresh start, you know, like some people just love the holidays. I don't know. I just get excited that everybody's like intentionally doing things that are good for other people. Like that's what I love about the whole season. It's like starting in October and kind of coming into, into December. Like there's just this like the like energy of love and acceptance and forgiveness and just that is palpable everywhere you go. I mean, sure. There's, you know, if you go to like a mall, there's some negative Nellies, but you know, in general, <laughs> Most people are pretty excited and that's contagious and I love it. And, and it's just a season filled with intention. So I'm it stoked. Yeah. I mean, it is intention kitchen after all, like for real. Yeah. I, I really always kind of liked, I I'm a gift giver. I have to be completely honest. Like I start thinking about things of what I want to give people in like August. And I just is that take your love language. Notes giving gifts I guess it is yeah yeah because so I mean that is a love language right there's yeah there's also I can't think of the five of them off the top of my head right now that's like put myself on the spot but giving and and receiving gifts is one of them and that's how some people express their love and it's beautiful I love that you plan for that long that's I know it's just who I know it drives my husband crazy. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm going to get this for them for Christmas. And it's like August. We're like sweating. We're like sweating outside. And I'm like, Oh, that's a good Christmas gift. And he's like, I'm not even thinking. Yeah. Like of yeah. anything hey, in yeah. this. I mean, in this year that probably did you a little good, a lot of good too, because of like shipping mm-hmm. delays and stuff. You're probably like ahead of the game. Yeah. I mean, this year has been just kind of bananas for me. I'm not going to lie. I still have a couple of things that I have to get done as far as gifts are concerned, but I have to be totally transparent with you. We have really cut back a lot when it comes to gifting. Cause it's just, a lot of it is just, I'd rather give one really incredible intentional gift that really came from my heart and is so sentimental and, and tugs on the person's heartstrings than a bunch of little things. Yeah, I agree. I think that's much more powerful. It is. It is. I think that like, I remember the intentional gifts that I receive, the ones that like are so unique and so like, wow, you really do know me. You know what I mean? Like this, those are the best gifts, you know, they really are. And one year I had a friend that for, and this was for my birthday, but for, for my birthday, she sent me groceries. Wow. Like a week and a half's worth of groceries for my family. And I was like, at first I was like, whoa, what if, what just happened? Why are the groceries being delivered? This was kind of, I don't even remember if this was like pre COVID. Like it was the first time I'd ever really had this happen at my house. I was kind of confused. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> oh, she was just like, I just wanted you to not have to do that this week for your birthday. And I'm like, do that. 
is an incredible gift. <laughs> that is an incredible gift. Yeah. And it wasn't, yeah. I mean, it was like every time I took, you know, there was lots of opportunity to try new things, which was also really cool, you know, because she, I mean, how would she know what we use in a week? But she was just like, oh, they, I think they, I know they like these things. She works with me on food a lot. So she has a general idea, but it was really cool. I had the opportunity to try new things. And I, and those things that she purchased for us, while not like monetarily, individually a lot, I had so many thoughts of her over the next few weeks. Like so many thoughts. Every time I pulled any of those things out, like it was there. And I was like, oh my God, she sent me groceries. Like and gave me back yeah. my time, which wow. is priceless. So yeah. especially on your birthday week, nobody wants to do all the home shopping on their birthday week. Yeah. I think I, I have to be honest. Like I think that I would very much enjoy grocery delivery than like an expensive bag because it's it's the thought that counts the person sitting there and they're deciding what they think is going to be satisfying and fulfilling to you and your family and it's just you know every time you bite that banana it's like wow I can't believe like it's nourishing you yes inside and out like from inside out it's just like you look yeah. at it you smile you eat it you smile your body is happy because it's nourished it's it was a beautiful thing and yeah. it's kind of opened me up to gifting in different ways too that I never really thought of before um so I've also been trying to find those those gifts that like hit that same spot like you would have never really even thought of that as a thing that was giftable yeah you know but man that was the best birthday week I swear I was just like what the heck? Just that one little thing. I mean, it gave me back like what all the three hours plus worth of time planning, like oh my God. hopping, yeah. hauling, loading, unloading. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a reason too why people do meal trains when they have a baby or a loss of a loved one. It really is such an intentional act of kindness and love. Oh, for sure. I mean, and, and it's just like when you don't have the words, and you gift someone something to eat and to like, you know, it, it's the same as sitting there and having the exact right words to express how you feel without the chance of like maybe your tongue like flubbing it up. Like your tongue mm -hmm. and your brain trying to dodge all the like landmines and walk on all the eggshells. You just go here. Here's this lasagna. It was my mom's recipe. It really means a lot to our family. And I hope you enjoy it. And I, I you know, I'm here with you if you need me. Like, yeah. that's what I got to do. And that lasagna will speak for you for days. Yeah, for real. Yeah. I think that's so true. Is it's, It is. Because sometimes there's just moments where it's, you don't need to say anything. You don't need to, you know, when you, you don't. There's nothing to say. But you want to show the person that they're appreciated and that you remember them. I and think, sometimes food just does it. Yeah, well, I think sometimes, like, you know, it, you posted something on Instagram and I think it was today. It was like a share of a share. And it was basically saying like, sometimes a I think it was like the greatest acts or those that you didn't even know happened or something like that. It's like, yes, there's the things that people like, you know, if somebody does something really nice for somebody and then they're like, I did this really nice thing. Mm. Mm. But if somebody does something that you'll never see, like they don't have any intention of you seeing it. They just do it out of the kindness of their heart. Like, yeah. And then often those things kind of come to the light, right? Because mm -hmm. they're pure and innocent, innocent and, and moments of just true love and caring. Yeah. And it's like, that's when you know, like that was real, you know, yeah. not just for like the, you know, there is gifting that people gift just to kind of like be I don't, I don't even know, like on gloat. social media. <laughs> yeah. Gloat, gift glow. Yeah. Ugh, I have a distaste for that. Sorry. Yeah. No, I just, I think that we need to stop. Sometimes it's, it's, it should never be about the share. It should never be about sharing it with the world, with your platform or anything like that. I can't tell you how good it makes me feel to just do something intentional and loving for somebody else and not get any credit for it. Oh my God. I love doing things like secret little secret Santa type things, but all your, well, long. you have a, you have a reputation of doing that now. We know, that, we know, we know what Meg's forte is. 
Well, well, you know, but people don't see it coming. They don't see it coming. They really don't. Because usually I'll wait until someone's like, I'm seeing they're having, having a moment. Like Mm -hmm. I'm often like the worst about like actual birthdays because I can't remember a date, but you better know if you're in my inner circle that somewhere around then on the day when you probably most receive it, something's showing up for you. That's the way I go. And then sometimes I just see my friends, like whether it's on Instagram or they text me, they're having a really rough time. And I'm just like, you know what? Now's when I'm going to send that little cheese bundle from that fancy creamery and maybe a nice bottle of wine, or maybe I'm going to send my friend some flowers in the middle of winter because I know she loves roses or whatever, lilies or whatever. Like I send her her favorite spring or summer flowers, not for any purpose at all. Yeah. And a lot of times I tell people, I'm like, please don't share this. Like I'll even include that. I'm like, please don't Mm -hmm. share this because I don't want other people to get their feelings hurt. It's not like a... I can, I can't afford to do that for everybody or all the time, yeah. I wish I could. but, um, you know, sometimes people just need it and you know, they need like that. I see you. Yeah. I see what you're going through and I love you. And, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. So we invite you to just, you know, when somebody crosses your mind this holiday season, I invite you to do something whether it's sending them an Amazon gift card, whether it's sending them something from Etsy or just a card, just letting them know that you're in, they're in your heart, go ahead and do it. I don't, you know, we really don't realize how much these small acts of kindness mean just to the world. Well, and in this digital age too, like Mm -hmm. I love handwritten cards. I think it's great to receive those, but I also am very aware that not a lot of people will actually do the follow through on those. And that comes with guilt that, that like leads to guilt, right? For the person Mm -hmm. who wrote the note, but never sent it. But you know, I found it really interesting. People love personal video messages. They really do. So sometimes when people like message me on my platforms, like on Instagram or whatever, a follower messages me and answers and asks me a question, I'll answer in a video. Like, it's my face. I'm talking to them. I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about you. Or, hey, I'm here answering your question. You know, and I don't do it, I don't do it all the time, but I do it when it feels appropriate. And people really love that. They're mm-hmm. like, this is more than a text. This is more than an email. This is like, it's you. You're really, you popped in my inbox with a, your face. <laughs> like, yeah. It was just this weird mug, but okay. I'm glad it makes you smile. I love it. <laughs> For real. It's, it's really about the intention of it. For me personally, I do a lot of voice memos because I don't want to type it out. Well, I mean, there's that too, right? I mean, right. I yeah. my moms, it's like, you know how women after they've had a baby, they're like, oh, my feet are flatter. Like <laughs> my feet went up mm-hmm. a half size. I think all the years of texting have flattened my thumbs. And so they get tired. And by the end of the day, they're pushing things that are like not making any sense. So I tend to jump to voice then too, but people love that too. And they mm-hmm. save them. That's the funny thing when people keep them. And I'm like, my phone goes, yeah. someone like, kept your message. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> How many times they don't listen to that? Yeah. What'd I say? That's usually, I'm like, crap, shit. What'd I say? Yeah. Did it I just make comes a fool in a moment like, yeah. like this. I'll be doing stuff. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, man, I'm just like, why is she on my mind? Why is Erica on my mind? Like, I can't get her out of my mind. And so then I'm like, hey, girl, what you doing? Just checking in on you. I want to say hi. <laughs> and, you know, that, you could do that in the holidays and all year, every day. Yeah. You don't need a holiday to no, just. Just intention. Just intention. Exactly. Speaking <laughs> of intention, what is your favorite thing that you have given somebody oh. as far as your in the most intentional gift you've given that you just loved. No. Wow. That's on the spot. Uh, (laughs) Oh, um, you know, like my, so my husband is very hard to shop for. Very hard to shop for. He doesn't (laughs) say he likes anything like ever. Everything is like, I'm like, do you like this? He's like, eh. And he's a designer, so he gets the right to say, and eh. he's a really good designer. So it's he like, is a good designer. I'm like, oh, I like everything. And I usually have to edit down because I think everything's cute or funny or 
he's like, no, I mean, it's nice, but it's not great. So, <laughs> um, a, <laughs> a couple years ago, um, I saved all year. I just saved like little bits of money back. And I was like, I'm gonna get him something really nice. And he, um, if anybody goes to our Instagram and they see pictures of our home, he really loves art and he specifically loves like street art and, um, really interesting, just different colorful art pieces. And there was an artist that he really loved out of Seal, Alabama. And midway through the year, he showed me like the guy's website and was like, Oh my God, look at this one. Look at this one. This was really cool. And I was like, no, do so. So I like literally had to reach out to the guy and I was like, I'm going to send you this now. And can I send you a little bit later? And then Christmas and it all worked out and I got it. And my husband though, saw that it sold out. It was gone on the website, like a few weeks later and was like disappointed for months. And then he just, like, opened it Christmas morning and like, I thought he might cry. Yeah. Oh. He was just like, oh my God, oh my God. He was like, I actually like went back and was like, oh man, it's gone. Dang, cause he's that guy that's like, I want it. I'm gonna get it, right? Yeah. And he didn't. So I jumped on it. And even though I didn't have like the means at the moment to get mm-hmm. it, I was like, I think my intention for why I wanted it when I reached out to the guy was why he was willing to work with me. So for me, that was it. Like, but yeah. like homemade, handmade things, I've given all sorts of, of things. I tend to do uh, handmade gifts and food more than I buy things for people. Like, cause I think like when I think about teachers and friends and neighbors or whatever, I usually just like <laughs> pre yeah. you know, baked goods. Um, do you do stuff like that? Do you like hand do. people? Um, last year we did take a break, but every year we do a, like a cookie bake cookie swap kind of thing. Me, my mom and my sister. Um, and it's always a lot of fun and we just, everybody gets cookies. Everybody looks forward to them. One year I actually, um, <laughs> I decided that I wanted to make limoncello one year. Right. Uh-huh. I love limoncello. I do too. But this was Erica not doing things right and being gentle when I was peeling the lemon and, you know, making it. I was putting too much of the white part of the lemon in. Yeah. Yeah. The pith. And the whole batch was so sour. Oh, it was like bitter and sour. Yeah, it was really bitter and sour. And so anyone that doesn't know like limoncello, you have to take the peel off the lemon, like with a vegetable peeler. And you have to, whenever a recipe says like, um, just the peel, use just the peel. Yeah. Don't, you don't want thick. Like you don't want the white stuff at all. It's got to be papery thin. Like you could like, yes, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. a noodle. It's so limp. Yeah. But I had way too much pith and my poor husband on Christmas Eve, we had the limoncello and everything like that. This was like Christmas Eve. You realized it was wrong. No, I tried it, but I was like, oh man, this is, this is, this is some limoncello. This is strong, right? (laughs) Like, I'm like, oh, maybe it's just because it's my only first, my first time making it homemade. But then you know, he had it on Christmas Eve and he just kind of looked at me when he took the shot and he's like, that's not lemon. It's not, it's not supposed to taste like that. <laughs> it's not supposed to taste like that. <laughs> that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was so sweet and he kept on, you know, sipping on it and everything like that. How because long he saw did you take? A while, like, how- a while. I mean, I imagine it's like weeks yeah. or months. Like long. he saw me, he saw me for, you know, he saw me in our kitchen peeling so many freaking lemons. He saw all of them, you know, downstairs in the basement sitting there for weeks. So he saw the hard work that I put into it. So he didn't want to like just toss it, which was like the sweetest thing. But I'm like, I'm not even drinking it, babe. <laughs> like yeah. this is bad. It's real bad. It's yeah. Real bad. I- my poor husband has stomached so many things over the yeah. years for me because I mean, there it's funny. I work in recipe development. If anyone doesn't know, that's like, I do have a blog, but like a lot of times I create recipes that never even make it to our blog for uh, other brands or for growers. And sometimes I have to create recipes about things that don't around things I don't like, like texturally or flavor wise. Yeah. My, my husband has to be the master tester. 
like mm. those situations because it like when i have a strong opinion about an ingredient i have a strong opinion about an ingredient <laughs> Whether the, pay- yeah. whether the paycheck associated with that ingredient or not, <laughs> like, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. For sure. But speaking of camp cookies, mm-hmm. you're going to be sharing with us. I am. So when it comes to intentional gift giving and homemade gifts during the holidays, cookies are my favorite. So Mm. I wanted to show you a super easy way for people who don't even want to like really bake, like make dough to put a little intention into your cookie gifting this year. And then for people who do like a baking project, I have a really fun recipe for them on my website that they can go to. And then I'm going to show them an equally fun way to put a little intention into those cookies too. Um, And it's super colorful. They are. If you guys are, see, if you guys see what I'm seeing right now on Zoom, beautiful. All right, guys, we will be back, and we are making cookies. Cookies. We are back, and we have crowns, and you still have antlers. I have and antlers. We are ready. YouTube hasn't make. seen them yet. There, there we go. YouTube. I know. YouTube, YouTube, look at us. Look at us. So hello, if you're joining from YouTube, we're back on Erica Russo's podcast, the Intuitive Souls podcast with our third episode of Intention Kitchen, which is all about gifting. And since it's the holidays, Erica and I are wearing our holiday hats. We are. So, I love your crown. It's very, Thank you. Like, it's very like Glinda. I like it. It is Glinda. It is very like when I'm, you know, when my Leo rising is, is coming out. And I'm feeling frisky. I just kind of, you know, put it on and just make sure all the males in my home know, like, you know. Yeah. You're having a feminine moment. Like a, fe- yes. it's a powerful feminine moment. Yes. Until- I am the queen bee. <laughs> Clearly. I love it. That's a great idea. Oh, my God. Okay. So we're talking cookies. We're talking gifting. You shared that one year you – um created an intentional homemade gift of limoncello and it didn't quite go as planned. I actually urge you to try that again. I am now that I know how to properly peel citrus because of this mess is ours and all of our classes inside of the intuitive life society and, (laughs) and all of that, I, I will probably try it again. I I always, um, Cassius kindergarten teacher always said, make your, turn your mistake into something great. And so Mm. I like took that when he was in kindergarten and I apply that to our everyday life. And he still says it too. He's in fifth grade now. And so I challenge you to turn that mistake into something great because I bet you make a mean limoncello and I, I, you know, my address, limoncello shippable. I mean, I make a mean cocktail. Like I, I really do. People love my pudding shots that I made for Thanksgiving. They were really good. I forgot to tell you about them. No, you didn't. You texted me that you made pudding shots for an army. I did. I I did. And they were really good. I'm really good. I mean, my jello shots are pretty good too. If I say so myself, all of my, yes, I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm a mixologist. I'll definitely give myself that. That's for sure. So I should try again and I'm going to. Yeah. You, you keep me posted and I'm on call if you need me. Okay. I'm on limoncello duty, but I love cookies and I think most people love cookies. I think it's one of those things that like, it it is a comfortable gift for people to make during the holidays for others or kind of people are used to giving them and used to receiving them. And, um, it's really special when you can make your cookies a little different. Right. So whether that's a recipe that came from your great grandmother's grandmother's grandmother or, um, you know, it's something super spectacular, like a custom, like sugar spice blend that you put on top, mm-hmm. like a cardamom sugar is really delicious on top of a sugar cookie. And that's just mm-hmm. a little cardamom ground up and mixed into your sugar topping, like super mm-hmm. simple little elements can make your cookies stand out and put more intention yeah. into them. So today I thought, since we talk about, um, chakras and the intention of you know, really honing into your chakras. And we talk about color a lot in the intuitive lifestyle society that I would take both of those things since the chakras are represented in colors um, and show you how to make a batch of cookies that are inspired by the chakras and also talk to you about the energy of the colors themselves. So Mm -hmm. let's just talk through the rainbow real quick. We're going to start with if you're not a home baker, but you want to give cookies, 
roll of sugar cookie dough. Okay, so this is like easy peasy. Let's talk through colors. When you're wanting to make colorful, intentional sugar cookies for Christmas with um, this kind of a cookie dough recipe, you can use these kind of tinted sugars. They're really like affordable. I think it's like $2 a jar. You can get any color you want. But if you're going for the colors of the chakras, you're gonna need a red for the root chakra, orange um, is sacral, yellow is solar plexus, green is for the heart, uh, blue is for the throat, purple is for the third eye, and you can get some regular what's called sanding sugar, which is white, um, for the crown chakra. Now, if you don't want to invest in all those, you can just hone in on one color that resonates with you and what you want to um, put out there into the world when you're gifting your cookies. So say you want positivity or renewal or you want to bring a sense of, of nature into your cookies, maybe you'd pick green sanding sugar, which is the heart chakra, but also symbolizes all of those things. Um, red stands for passion, pink stands for love, orange stands, um, I even wrote these down, where did I get those? Oh, orange, excitement, enthusiasm, which clearly I am excited right now. <laughs> <laughs> I always get like all like the clamps when I get excited, I'm like, ah! Um, so the green, like I said, that's the heart, um, blue, calmness serenity maybe you just want to give somebody who's having like a really rough tumultuous year some cookies that are like coated in blue um just to bring in that sense of calm so all you're going to do for this is can you see erica i can see I've got i can see the role rainbows here mm -hmm. i mean just talk about the the semblance of color like just think about the rainbow itself and what it stands for like yeah i mean it's powerful to so many people for so many different reasons and you could literally just make rainbow cookies and it yeah. would be a really beautiful platter of cookies too. The most colorful at the party. So you know, I was just, while you were talking about just like the, the intention of color, right? Mm -hmm. We, we don't give color credit. Color <laughs> is an energy color holds a vibration to it. And I made one year, I made these delicious key lime cookies. They had like a nice green tint to them, not too green, but I'm thinking like, imagine creating like three different cookie recipes, all based upon the heart chakra and yeah. focusing on the green color. Oh, you could do pistachio cookies too. You could. And then the sugar or cookies. A minty cookie. And a, oh, mm -hmm. ooh. Mm -hmm. You could do all sorts of things. I mean, green also, it symbolizes money. It symbolizes mm -hmm. the, um, nature. It symbolizes renewal and rebirth um, as far as energetically as a color goes. There's so many things that you could do with just different variations of green cookies. And, and like we were talking about our class we're doing next, I keep hitting my thing with my antlers. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube people are like, what's happening to that, that top <laughs> video waving around? It's because my antlers are up there. Sorry, people. I'll put them back here on the back of my head. Um, where were we, what was I saying? I forgot. I forgot. Oh, our, our class. Oh, the class. Like you could just do cookies based off of a color. You could do a board with your cookies as the superstar. So you made some pistachio cookies and you made some green mint cookies and you want to like fill out with maybe like some cheese that pairs with a pesto. Um, some kind of like something that you layer with, with basil leaves on there. So you've got all this green flowing through your board. That's like what we're going to talk about next Monday in our class. Like I know. super simple things, but you could really just hone in on one color. Like You could. And I think it's a lot easier to make the charcuterie board prettier if you're just focusing in on one color. Just kind of like, you know, I think it's a lot it's easier. It's so busy. Yeah. You know, it's a lot. Okay, so I'm going to show people who aren't cooks. This may be like not rocket science to people who are familiar in the kitchen. But if you just get a cookie dough tube and you're wondering how to make nice even cookies for the holidays because you want them to look uniform, the best way to do that is to cut, open up the whole tube, cut the tube in half. And then you'd work with each half independently. So if I could get 16 cookies out of one tube, I want eight cookies out of each half. So you cut the, that whole roll in half, and you cut each half into half, and then you cut each half into half. See where I'm going here? Mm -hmm. And then each one of those gets halved. So now for our podcast listeners, I have eight cookies sliced out of 
half of a roll of cookie dough that are all the same thickness. None, none are going to spread more than others. They're going to be nice and uniform. So when you do put them on a cookie platter, it actually looks like a homemade cookie. Like the telltale giveaway for me of somebody that did a store-bought cookie and like is trying to pass it is when they start just hacking from the end. And so you get some like huge spread out cookies and some itty bitty cookies. I'm like, mm, you did the tube. I know what you did. Okay. So I'm going to show you just how to roll one of these because it's not rocket science. This is super easy. This is a cookie that you decorate before you bake. So you get your tube, you slice your tube, you pick your color. We're going to decorate with pink. So pink actually represents love, kindness, feminine energy. Mm. You can even too, like what you can do with pink is you can make a cute little gift bag or gift box and have some rose quartz in there. You could put some kind of tea. And rose petal, rose petal tea. Rose tea. Ooh. You could do a uh, passion tea in there. But do you mm -hmm. see this, Erica? It's just all around the outside, perfectly sanded. That's so simple. All you do is just put Put the sugar down, a good amount of it on a plate, on a flat surface, and you just roll the outside of those slices in there and you lay it on your sheet pan like that. Bake it as the pan, uh, as the tube says to bake, and you're done. Like, two So minutes. easy. And it's like the intention is in the planning, right? It's, the intention mm -hmm. doesn't have to be in the laborious task of making it. The yeah. intention comes, it's in the thought, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's, the intention also comes in the follow through. So we so had that thought about making these cookies and maybe we don't have time to like go and, you know, make cookies from scratch. Maybe we don't have time to like spend hours hand rolling and, and whatever, but we do have time to go to the store and grab a roll of dough and then come home and make them cute. And we just so yep. happen to like pick a color that really means something to us that we want to share with you. Super easy. Two minute project. Now this one is for your followers and the YouTube viewers that like a baking project. So I have developed, ooh, I'm attached to sound. Hold on. I'm trying to reach across my kitchen and get this other sheet pan of mm. cookies. And I'm connected to the microphone, so I'm trying not to disconnect. So these are for people. If you like to bake, I have created a super delicious, super easy basic sugar coat uh, cookie dough recipe that's on my website. I'll link it below. Um, Erica will have it linked in her show notes too. So you can make that. It's like five ingredients. Super basic. You can make it gluten-free or you can make it regular. It doesn't matter. So the point is you make the cookies, you cut them any shape you want. I happen to like these little rounds. And then with these, I just make a basic, what's called like a powdered sugar icing. Have you ever done that, Erica? I have. I okay. have. It's delicious. So, yeah. It's just like powdered sugar and you can, most, some people do water. Um, I will tell you if your water has any color to it, your powdered sugar icing will have a color to it too. So use the filtered water hmm. you might be like if you're like oh mine's like tinging yellow get a filter for your water that's a different yeah. show. um anyway but i have seen that happen but um i use milk because it's pure white and i want like a white base to start from so you hmm. make a big batch of powdered sugar and milk and it's like a cup of powdered sugar start with a tablespoon of milk you need a little bit more add a little bit more it's a no recipe recipe from there what you can do is get liquid or paste color uh like these are a little liquid you drop in like yellow or green or blue whatever you want again you could do all the different colors of the chakras but you can see i made these right before we started so they've started to set up a little bit which is what they'll do on the cookie but you just whisk it up take your baked cookie top side down Dump it, dunk it, I dunk it into the color. So we're doing green right now because for those of you on YouTube and for Erica, maybe she can see I've already started working my way up the chakras. So I've got the red, I've got for the root, I've got the orange for the sacral, I've got the yellow for the solar plexus, and this is the green for the heart. So as today goes, as I keep working this morning, I'll just cre keep creating colors, moving my way up the chakras. Mm -hmm. So I have all of the colors and then each batch of cookies that I gift gets one of every color. Now this icing is super great because while it is easy to decorate, you just dip. It mm -hmm. also sets up super, super firm. It's like part of the cookie. I was going to say what you can do. Do you think that they're like strong enough to like make it like stackable and Absolutely. then like in a nice like 
plastic and just make yep. it look pretty. Ooh, that looks so Within cute. a couple hours, this is like indestructible. You can wow. stack them on top of each other. You can, you could throw them at each other. Mm. <laughs> it's like part of the cookie. Um, but you do have to give them a couple hours to set up, um, be a little patient. You know, you don't want to dunk them and take them because they do, they do, you know, it's, it's frosting it's sugar. It's got to set in the air. Um, but once it enrobes those cookies, I mean, you can do all sorts of things with it. I have even taken these and created like little wreath looking tops for them. So I'll cut a hole out of one. So it's kind of like a, a sandwich cookie then I have one that's one complete cookie dipped in icing and then one that is a cookie with a center cut out and I'll sandwich them together while the icing's still wet so you can see through to the color of the other cookie you can see it around the outside kind of like an oreo so the color's there but then when I, I have actually like to powder sugar the top so it looks like a wreath so it's covered in snow mm. but little pops of color and then it's a double cookie I don't know if that made sense. I was trying to like think of how to say that. So podcast people, <laughs> their, their imagination and like my brain's going faster than my mouth, but I think I did it. I think you did too. I'm just so hungry right now. I, I should have eaten something. Cookies. Like you can- should send me cookies. I'll take the cookies. I will take those cookies. I'm, I'm like sitting here literally the whole time. I'm like, I should have been more intentional this morning. Because I am so hungry looking at these cookies. <laughs> I have been baking cookies for days over here for clients. And I'm so yeah. like cookie loaded. I am, mm. I totally need to send you a box. I wish you lived closer. You can send me a box. I'll take them. I might just do that. You should. I'll you take them. like some chakra cookies. Oh my God. They will love chakra cookies. Oh, good, they will good. love chakra cookies. Tony will love chakra cookies. Yeah. I'll- I'll send you, I'll st- I'll do Insta stories. Okay. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I know you will. I did Insta stories this morning, like all sort of talking about this. And I was like, I can't tell you what oh, so you're doing excited. yet. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing my hat. Just you saying. were. Yeah. yeah. I had to take it off because it was, the antlers were messing yeah. up. It's okay. You know. It's all good. Oh, that sounds, I'm so hungry. I, I will, I have to just, oh well, man. I think these are our easiest recipe yet. I mean, you and I were talking about. It is the easy. Day. I mean, simmer pots are pretty freaking easy. That's something else you could gift too, by the way. Like yes. you could go back. We created simmer pots. We talked about those in our first episode. And mm-hmm. one of my favorite things to do for people that live afar is to create simmer pots, but like actually bag up the ingredients and use dried mm-hmm. ingredients. So instead of using like a fresh apple, Use dried apple rings, like create your recipe with dried fruits instead of fresh yes. fruits. And people still get the same benefit simmering them. And you can create cute little bags, little, I mean, you can do all sorts I know. of things. I know yeah. you can write the intention on the bay leaf mm-hmm. for them so that when they get it, they're like, oh, yeah. Well, and you know, that's so my cute. favorite thing about summer pots is to write mm-hmm. like my wish or my intention for the day or, or if one of my kids has had a bad day, like they always say like, you know, a mother is only as happy as her unhappiest child. And, you know, sometimes it's just my child's name on that bay leaf. Cause I just want their heart to be happy. If they had a good, mm. you know, a bad day the day before, like, it's just like a plunk that little guy. In there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. hokey that. as it is, I think it works. Yeah. And these are just simple things. Like even, even the, I would love someone to like, give me a little bag of like simmering potpourri and just, that's just going in to your spices. Yeah. That's it. You have everything. You have everything you possibly need. For those of us that like do buy things like dried flowers and stuff, dried spices Mm -hmm. throughout the year, um, they have a shelf life and you know, it's about 12 months. And so you should be using those. You should be gifting those. Like that's the beauty of them. Don't let them go bad in your cabinet. Like think of Mm -hmm. intentional ways to use them in the holidays. You can even put together little fireplace bundles if somebody has a wood burning fireplace with spices. Mm. Um, that emit like a fragrance when they start their fires, like they were live somewhere cold, like, Oh, can you imagine like some cloves and allspice and like star anise thrown into a fire? Oh yeah. You could do, I mean, there's a million and one ways that you can gift intentionally with things you have in your spice cabinet, in your kitchen, Mm -hmm. in your home, whether it be color, whether it be flavor, whether it just be, you know, something like, you know. I, I'm going to make you some rosemary salt with dried rosemary and coarse, you know, sea salt and bag it up and um, use it as you see fit. Like 
that's rosemary has properties of protection and and you know i know that it's one of your favorite ingredients and mm -hmm. it's super simple but if i were to mm -hmm. receive a jar of beautiful handmade rosemary salt from someone i would be using it on everything yeah I would use potato salad i would like toss Ooh. a little over my shoulders and put it in the corner of my rooms mm -hmm. <laughs> put it in my bath you know so yeah. gifts don't have to be expensive and i think that's the message that we wanted to relay um, in this today was that gifts don't have to be expensive and, and, you know, it doesn't have to be this like big contrived thing either to mean something powerful. It can be yeah. very little. The power is in the intention and the thought. That's where Absolutely. it starts. Yeah. Exactly. In your intention. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You're Thank beautiful. you. You're beautiful. <laughs> you are just, you're lovely over there with your crown well i'm wearing the crown well you're you're wearing a crown i'll put my i'm back. wearing a crown i was wearing a crown this is my nature crown yes nature this crown. is just my crown period <laughs> okay ow <laughs> okay guys <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Again, if you guys are interested, come hang out with us next week, December 6th through December 10th at the five day intuitive living summit. We are going to be doing an intention charcuterie class next Monday, and we want to see you there. Link is in my bio or in the show notes again. Love you guys. Have a wonderful week.